Hello friends, this is Satvinder Bhatia from Sukhmani Immigration Services, Brampton, Canada. I'm a regulated and licensed Canadian immigration consultant. Today, I'll be sharing with you a major announcement which happened day before yesterday. And this is one of the biggest announcement. This is done by two ministers. I'll be sharing complete details with you. But before that, very small request. If you are new to the channel and have not subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. We talk a lot about Canadian immigration news, update tips, tricks on this channel. If you like the video, please share it with your family and friends so that they can also benefit. Please press the bell icon so this video comes to you immediately when we upload. Just remember one single thing. This channel is dedicated to Canadian immigration. Anything happening on Canadian immigration, you will get it here. So with that, let's move on to a very, very important video, which is about the shocking Dates. Shocking changes. These shocking changes are here. What are these shocking changes? So, let me tell you the complete story behind this. First of all, where and when these changes are announced. So, these, these changes are announced in a press release. This happened on 18th September, Wednesday. It happened in Ottawa and the two ministers were there, the Minister for Immigration, Mark Miller, and ESDC Minister, Randy. So these two ministers were there, and they jointly addressed the conference, and they jointly spoke about this entire thing. So they are shocking changes. These, the, these changes are really, really explosive. And these shocking changes are going to make the things from bad to worse. So the goal, what was the goal behind all these? The goal was to manage the flow of temporary resident. The temporary resident, if we go by the numbers, the population of Canada is 40 million, around 40 million. And the percentage of temporary resident is about 6.5%, which comes to around 2.5 million. So it's a very big chunk and government plans to reduce this 6.5% to 5% in by year 2026. So that's the main goal behind this. The announcement and the goal are pretty clear. Okay, so now let us see where the changes happen. So, you know, few bloggers, travel bloggers, food bloggers, all these are talking only about one or two changes. There are not, there are so many changes. But unfortunately, they fail to read the entire story. So, the first change, of course, it is related to PGWP, Postgraduate Work Permit. Second one is related to Study Permit. The third one is related to Spousal Open Work Permit. The fourth one is related to LMIA and Temporary Foreign Worker. And the last is related to Refugee. So all categories, whatever category you are into it, this video is the most important video for you. So let's start with the PGWP. PGWP is Postgraduate Work Permit. Postgraduate Work Permit is an open work permit. A student who gets this, if he has studied, he or she has studied one year from Canada, he gets one year work permit. If two years, then the student gets three years of PGWP. This was old story, but new story is something else. The new rules have come. The rules have changed. When a student who comes to Canada, he or she has already taken IELTS exam. He or she has already done language assessment. Academic test has been already taken. But now the things have changed. Earlier, they, earlier a student who wishes to be a PR in Canada used to take two tests. One test which is IELTS Academic and the second one is IELTS General or any kind of other language tells self paper or PTE code. But again, the things have changed. So what are the changes? Let us see the new requirements which will be coming in from November 
1st 2024 new language requirement and honestly i don't agree to this what's going on i am beyond my understanding why is government doing it it is just like a barrier why, what is the reason what is the logic i fail to understand because when a student comes to canada he or she has already taken ielts academic test and now the new requirement is you have to take a test again after you complete your studies earlier you complete your studies you give the completion certificate you give the transcript and apply for the pgwt simple that's it but now there is an additional requirement which is language requirement you again have to take an ielts exam so and you need clb7 clb7 in ielts means six each but why i don't understand don't ask me why i i fail to understand either the government is not trusting the exam which student has taken earlier or something else but this is this is what the rule is that's it so clb7 for university graduates if you graduate from a college then clb5 so clb7 comes to ielts 6 each clb5 comes to a 5 in each category and 4 in reading so that's the situation now let us look at the changes which are also in pgwp just not these are not the changes there are more changes which happened in postgraduate work permit the length of the i already told you the length of the pgwp was very simple you study one year you get one year you study two year you get three years simple but this simple formula has finished now the length of the pgwp will depend on what kind of studies you have taken so you say i have taken business okay then probably you will not even get a pgwp the chances are that you may not even get a pgwp because they have attached tied this to the field of study so the graduates from public colleges can still get three year public colleges right remember the word public colleges can get three years of pgwp but it depends if the study is linked remember the word study is linked to the occupation suppose you are studying and i'm giving an example suppose you are studying construction you are into the carpenter field you are into the plumbing hvac then in these fields it is linked to occupation which has labor shortage then you can expect a complete three year pgwp but you say you know i have done business forget it forget it my friend you will forget it so this will reduce look at the number which government is projecting pgwp will reduce by almost 175000 right here are the numbers that's the situation so now this is about pgwp let's move on to the second part the second part is about study permit changes the study permit the government has straight away put a cap so every year government used to increase the quota they have done the reverse the quota for 2024 was 485000 it has been reduced to 437000 for next year 2025 10% reduction is done and this is done the cap is to go on till 2026 so they will further reduce for 2026 or keep it like this i don't know but this will go on till 2026 that's a situation so this is about the study permit and now study permit changes more changes in study permit so earlier remember the study permit we have i have brought all this information to you earlier in my videos that for bachelors or for undergraduate programs you have to get a pal but for masters pal was not required pal is provincial attestation letter but 
again another change is done now for masters and phd pal is required so 12% of the study permit allocation so 12% is say around 50000 if you 437 if you do 12 12% roughly 50000 say 50000 is reserved for students to long term benefits to the labor market so those who are doing studies in those areas they will be reserved for masters and phd also that reservation is there so that's a good thing but overall there are so many barriers which have been created for pgwp for study permit so before coming to canada think twice now so that's the situation about the study permit let's look at another category which is a big category spousal open work permit and i don't want to mince my word i don't want to say it uh, you know in a polite fan fashion i want to clearly say that this is happening this is clear this is obvious so what happens is this is a modus operandi so people send their daughter in law newly wedded daughter in law to canada followed by their son will come so basically what they do is they invest money on a girl and say okay you go and call my son to canada this is what was happening but now this has been reduced also how so this has already been reduced this is further reduced now because earlier you come to canada on a after 12th you just do a diploma you come to canada and call your spouse to canada right or you do a bachelor's you call your spouse to canada this has already been stopped only masters people can call the spouse to canada those student who are into the masters or phd program can call their spouse to canada but this has further the further twist is now added to it because there were lot of masters program which are one year now they are saying ircc is saying that masters program has to be 16 months plus of duration so another barrier so you have to find a masters program which is 16 months plus and then only you can call your spouse to canada so eligibility now this is about the students who come here uh, on the study permit and call their spouses now there are there is spousal open work permit is also for those people who are here on lmia based work permit so they are lmia based work permit they can call their spouse to canada simple that used to be again used to be the new thing so already the new introduction is there that this spousal visa is only limited to managerial professional occupations and sections where labor shortage is there so suppose you come here as a cook as a chef right chances are you won't be able to call your spouse to canada just a example i'm saying right it has to be a managerial job you come as a supervisor security supervisor and you want to call your spouse to canada forget it so this will lead to 50000 reduction in the spousal open work permits so that's expected to come by 2027 another barrier okay so from spousal open work permit let's move on to another fact thing which is lmia and temporary foreign worker so lmia has already gone a drastic changes i have complete video on that you can watch that but to add further spice to this what has been done more rigorous lmia assessment will be done so the employers will be will have a very tough time getting a lmia now and that is also to ensure that canadians and the pr card holders and the citizens are prioritized as well as enforcing this is very important point enforcing uh strong measures and this enforcement is going on so please don't think that this is not going on this has already has started those employers which are misusing the system can expect enforcement very soon 
So that's what is another important thing, temporary foreign worker and LMIA changes. Now, another change which happened in the category of refugee and asylum cases. So world over, a lot of changes are going on. Whether you look at Israel, whether you look at Russia, or whether you look at African countries, a lot of changes are going on. War, displacement, lots of things. So people want to move to a safer country. And that's where government is trying to address all these things. So visa requirement. Mexico has earlier, you can just show your Mexican passport and come to Canada. Now visa requirement has started and asylum um, claims and are in simple language, they are more strict now, as simple as that. They are saying it is fairer and integrity, but if you look at from a simpler viewpoint, it making asylum claim will be more tough now. And the last thing is the budget will be allocating more money over the five years, around 743 million for the Canada refugee system. So to make it faster, better, so you can expect you file a refugee case and you can expect a refusal very soon. That kind of thing will be happening. You can see over the next few years, you can see this is going to happen. So that's about the changes which have been announced. In the middle of all these changes, if you still want to discuss your case, you can discuss with us any type of case. PNP, express entry, caregiver, refusal, refugee, appeal cases, anything. You can make an appointment and discuss your own case one-on-one -on -one basis. Our office is located in Brampton. Address, email ID, phone number. Everything is shared right here with you. And very important, if you have still not subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing. And thank you very much for watching the video. Thanks.